All right, let's talk about inhomogeneous versus homogeneous linear equations. We can start out with a simple example in the plane where we've got our axes. And let's say we have the equation x plus y equals 0. Really simple equation. Or y equals minus x. That's a line like this through the origin. Okay. Well, what if we change the right-hand side? x plus y equals 2. Well, then that goes through 2 comma 0 and 0 comma 2. But what do you notice about these two lines? They're parallel. Okay. And that's sort of the fundamental geometric observation, is that if we have a system and we don't change the coefficient matrix here, the augmented matrix was 1, 1, 0. The coefficient part of that was just 1, 1. Here it's 1, 1, 2. Coefficient matrix is the same. Then, and we just change the right-hand sides, then we're not going to radically change the set of solutions of the equations, the system of equations. We're just going to move it parallel to itself. And we're going to focus, in a minute I'll show you why, we want to focus a lot of the time on what's called the homogeneous case. Homogeneous. I'll try and squeeze it in here. Okay. And that's when the right hand side's zero. Now, here it's just a zero number. In general, it'll be the zero vector. Okay. So let's look at just a little more complicated case geometrically. Look at three dimensions. And let's look at still one equation and three unknowns. So here's x, y, z. And let's say it's, um, to get a relatively good one to plot, let's just do x plus, well, let's do the analog, x plus y plus z equals 0. The normal vector to that is uh, 1, 1, 1, using the other book's terminology. Um, that's not something we would say in a pure linear algebra context yet, but we, that gives us an idea of where, how to plot it. And so that's going to be something where the normal vector is sticking out toward us and, and to the right and, and, uh, and up. And so the plane is going to be something like this that's cutting through in the back there. So for example, if z equals 0, we just get the line x equals minus y again. And then it's tilted back. Well, what happens if I change that? say to x plus y plus z equals 1, that's actually easier to plot because its, uh, it, it's axis intercepts are all very simple. They're just the one points on the axis. And so what's going what's gonna to happen is we're going to take something that's going through the, the origin and we're going to lift it up towards us and we're going to get a plane that intersects in this triangle. We're going to get something that's just parallel to that original plane but just kind of moved almost directly toward us. And so that's going to be this guy. How do we know they're parallel? Well, again, the normal vector is the same for both of those guys. All we've done is we've translated it parallel to itself. And we're going to see a, a linear algebra explanation for that in just a second. Um, now, these are still special because the matrices were just one row. And this was 1, 1, 1, 1. That was the augmented matrices. Well, what if we actually added another equation to that? Let's see. I think I might be able to do it on the same picture. Let's look it at if we did x plus y plus z equals 0. And then, well, just to be really simple, let's say z equals 0. Now the augmented matrix, oop, that's going down below my, my line there. The augmented matrix of that is going to be 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Very simple. And that's just putting in the stipulation that should be on the x, y plane. Oh, that's back to our original example, this guy. OK. What if we then looked at something where we changed the right-hand sides? What if we change these guys to 1s? Now it's going to be on this plane, the plane that was lifted up toward us, this guy that I'm trying to indicate that's closer to us than the, the original one that's going through, that has this triangle in it. And 
then we're also looking at the intersection of that with z equals 1. Well, now it's going to definitely get too busy. So let's start over with our picture. This is where I'd be good. Maybe I should do this on the computer, too, so we can r rotate these around. But I like to be able to do it freehand because it's quicker. Um, so now we're looking at this plane that goes through this triangle and extends that out, slanting in all directions. And then we're looking at the intersection of that with z equals 1. Well, that's going to be that plane intersected with the horizontal line z equals 1. It's going to be like this. OK. Well, what, how does that compare with the original one where there were zeros? They're still parallel. It's not as obvious in three dimensions. I, I give you that. OK. But I claim that they're parallel to each other. And that, I claim, is a completely general phenomenon, that if we just change the right-hand sides of the equations, we get the same kind of thing. We don't get, it doesn't change a plane into a line or a line into a plane. So it gets the same dimension of solution space. And it just changes it parallel and it moves it away from the origin. So let's see algebraically what's going on with that. Maybe I'll change to the uh, pretty printing. Okay. So. solution sets. Okay, so we're looking at solution sets of systems. And so, for example, we were looking at the difference between um, this matrix, homogeneous. Oops, that was a 1. And so that's homogeneous because the right-hand sides are all 0 versus similar kind of thing. But then I just change these guys to be something non-zero. And it doesn't matter. It could be 2, 5, minus 7 pi, whatever. OK. And that is inhomogeneous. OK. So let's look at, these are such, uh, such simple equations. We can write down, we can write down the explicit solutions to the homogeneous equation. That's going to be. Um, we know that z equals 0. And then we know that x plus y plus z equals 0. And so in other words, x plus y equals 0. We were observing that. And so in other words, just y equals minus x. And so the, the solutions are going to be, let's put in a new matrix or a little column vector. Oops, wrong way getting confused. OK. So that's going to be just anything for x, let's call it t, minus that for y, and 0 for z. OK. So it's the, that set of numbers where t is in uh, r, the real numbers. OK. So what about the inhomogeneous case? It's going to be very, very similar. It's just going to put in some fixed numbers instead of just the, the variables. Notice that this is very special in that um, it goes to the origin. If t equals 0, there's nothing here. There's no constants to screw it up from going to the, through the origin. And that's always going to be true. If I have a bunch of equations where zeros are on the right-hand side, the origin will always be a solution. We'll, I'll state that more precisely in a second. So what about the inhomogeneous case? OK, so here z equals 1. And so x plus y plus z, which is 1, equals 1. Ah, so it happens to be you just get x plus y equals 0 again. And all that's happened is moved up. And that's what the picture was uh, before I erased it. Silly, silly me in the, uh, on the freehand. OK. And so what we're getting here is very, very simple, very, very similar thing. It's just, boom, that's now equal to 1. Now, obviously, these numbers were very, very simple. Uh, maybe a little too simple, but I wanted to make sure that I could draw the picture as well. And so what's going on here is that this is just what happens. Let me write it out. It's, this, it's the set of these guys, but plus to every one of the homogeneous solutions, I just add a, the same fixed vector. Let me just pick this up and edit it. That'll be the quick way to do that. Now that fixed vector happens to be very simple, but the structure is really the the crucial thing. Let me expand that for a minute. So 
the set of inhomogeneous solutions is the same structure as the set of homogeneous solutions, but everything's just been shifted up by one. That's going to take a line and just shift it to something parallel. And so parallel lines algebraically is we're going to have like a set of like t times some vector, some fixed vector. That's a line going through the origin, OK? And then if I take that, and then I just add some other solution, some other fixed vector without the t, that's going to be a situation like this. Let me show the free hand again. It's going to be like this, where I've got a, a u vector and then I take all the multiples of that, that's all these set, the set of all possible TUs. That's the kind of thing we're going to get for a homogeneous solution set. A line or plane through the origin, or in higher dimensions it's going to be a little more complicated, but basically a line or plane through the origin is the right idea. And then I'm going to take some other vector, some other unrelated vector V, and use that to shift everything. This is going to be what I get if I take any of the vectors along this line, and then I shift it by v, or I take this vector and shift it by v, or I take this vector and I shift it by v. That's all of the tu plus v's. And so that's what it means algebraically to take some line, especially through the origin, to, to start out with it's simple, because that's the case for homogeneous solutions, and shift it. And that's what we're going to get all the time here. Okay, so this is a general phenomenon that the solution sets, solution sets, I'll say the solution set to an inhomogeneous equation is parallel to the solution set of the corresponding homogeneous equation. And so can be obtained by adding a fixed vector to any homogeneous solution. So that's the word in words. Let's let's write that out in symbols a little bit. What we're going to say is that let's say um, x h, and now x this is going to be a vector. X h is a homogeneous solution. To what? Well, let's see. Now that we have the matrix vector terminology, it's matrix equation terminology, it's very easy to say this. Let's say the equation is A x equals B. And x and B are vectors, and A is a matrix. OK. Oh, that's right. x equals 0. OK. So this is kind of redundant. By saying homogeneous, I mean that has to be 0. OK. Now let's say, so the idea here is that I have um, all of the XH's. And that's really going to be our main work, is finding all of the XH's very often. Suppose I have all possible XH, the homogeneous solutions. And we know how to do that. It's row reduction, all that kind of stuff. And it's in a special case where the right-hand side is 0. So that's nice. It's going to have nice properties, it turns out. And I have just one particular inhomogeneous solution. Suppose um, I was lazy. I didn't want to solve the inhomogeneous problem. But somebody else wasn't much less lazy, but just found one solution. And let's just call that xp for a particular solution. It should be really called xi for inhomogeneous, probably. But people tend to call it particular. This, the, the particular word here is, isn't that important. It's just, pr it's just pointing out that we only need one. It doesn't have to be general. OK. Then I claim that if I take the sum of those guys, I sum together an xp and an xh. Then that is a solution. OK. Oh, yeah. So this is an, the, the particular solution was to the equation ax equals b. That's where we really do have a right-hand side. And that's going to be non-zero. Okay. 
So these guys come in a pair, inhomogeneous equation and its corresponding homogeneous equation. And you might think that they're just different, but they're so closely related that when we want to understand this, very often we really switch to understanding this, which has some simpler properties. And then to get back, the claim is all I need is one little solution to ax equals b. And so the, the way to say it is that xp plus h, xh is a solution to the full equation, the inhomogeneous version. This is, looks a little bit more formal and complicated with the symbols and everything, but it's just this observation that we had in the very first example that x plus y equals 0 and x plus y equals 1 were parallel. And then algebraically, that corresponds to taking whatever solution set we have for our, in, our homogeneous equation, which is going to always go through the origin. And then if we can just find one other solution, this v is really playing the role of the xp, the particular solution, then that's just going to shift it into the inhomogeneous solutions. Okay, that's enough for a video. We'll get a lot of practice with this, too.